Amen. 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 And amen. God is good all the time. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, God. We do this by the way of the grace and the mercy and the power of the ever-loving Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you for every single day that you have given us, Father. We thank you for allowing us to arise and take care of tasks that have been put in front of us, Father. Father, you send us places where we know not the area, Father. You send us places where we know not the people, Father. You send us places where we know not the culture, God. And we thank you for guiding us through these areas and these moments in our life, Father, where we don't understand what individuals are doing around us. We don't understand why people are saying the words that they are saying. We don't get it, Father, because they are not speaking of you in a positive light, Father. But there we are as your nation, one race, God's race, the human race, standing tall and standing firm, Father, understanding, Father, day by day that you are here and you have never left us, God that you stand with us, Father. We thank you for that, God. We thank you for the encouragement. We thank you for the daily struggles as well, Father. We thank you for the strengthening that you give us, Father. And we thank you for the Savior that you have provided us, God, in Jesus Christ's name, the Nazarene. By way of the grace and the mercy and the power of the Holy Spirit, Father, we thank you and give you praise and acknowledge you, God. Amen, amen, and amen. God is good all the time. We always have an opportunity to give God praise. It's up to us on a daily basis. No one can force us to give God praise. You shouldn't want to be forced to give God praise. God will always send us where God feels we need to be. God will place us in a situation in life to where we might not always understand what's going on. We might not even relate to the individuals that or around us at certain moments and times in our lives. But God would do this intentionally because there's nothing new to God. And I think sometimes as the human race, we forget collectively and individually that there's nothing new to God. So where God places us may feel unfamiliar and it may feel uncomfortable and we do not recognize it at all, but God does. And therefore, we must lean on the understanding of God. And we forget to remember. We're always looking forward. We're always looking towards the future. But we also need to learn how to look towards the past, because if we look towards the past, that is filled with reference points. The past is filled with reference points, points of reference, points to where we can refer to when we currently go through a situation in our own lives. If we really think about it, our life is filled with reference points, previous reference points. It is history. We have to think about this and we have to understand that God knows all because God created all, including you, including I, including every situation that is revolving around this globe, including every circumstances that is cutting through your life and every other individual that is here on this globe's life, here on planet Earth. There is not one individual that has a clean and perfect life. That is what makes us all one body, the body of Christ. We have these opportunities to learn from each other, to express to one another. We have opportunities to see someone who has made a major mistake. We have opportunities to see people who have not been as successful as they thought they were. And when we have these opportunities in life, what do we do with them? Do we find a way to make it humorous? 
to make it humor out of it. And if you really understand the word humor, the word humor involves pain. Humor is not necessarily supposed to make you laugh. Understand what these words truly mean that we speak. Know the etymology. Truly know the etymology, not just the definition, because if you notice, the definitions of words change over time. If you get a dictionary from 1940, 1950, 1920, and you look certain words up compared to what they are now, and if you have dictionaries from the past, you might not even see those words in the dictionary anymore. That's the catch. The dictionary knows how to erase history. So understand the etymology of words. Understand that you might need to get dictionaries from different decades, different generations, different points and times in history so you can truly understand what words mean. Now everybody's using the word woke. Oh, all of a sudden the definition of the word woke will not mean what it meant in 1980 as it meant in 2020. But God knows all. That's why we must remember. That's why we must put it back together. The word remember means put back together again. And that's what God wants us to do, is to remember God. Remember the body of Christ. Remember Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Remember the Holy Spirit, our comforter, who is here with us now and has anointed us with cloven tongues of fire. Because that's what Jesus blessed us with, was the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit blessed us with cloven tongues of fire. And before that, God blessed us with Jesus. And before that, God blessed us with Abraham. And before that, God blessed us with words from Ezekiel. God blessed us with Noah. God blessed us with Moses. God blessed us with Eve. God blessed us with Adam. God blessed us with the Spirit moving across the water. See all of these blessings of God. Do you know how loved was formed? Do you know how faith itself was molded and shaped? God knows how faith was molded and shaped because God molded faith. God knows how love was formed and God knows the measure of love itself. God knows the geometry of space. Yet there is no up, down, left, or right in outer space. If an astronaut has no equipment, no tools, no connection back to Earth, and their ship goes wayward and begins a tailspin, would it ever stop? God knows the atmospheric pressure because God has created that. God knows matter because matter cannot be created or destroyed, but God knows matter because God developed matter. So why can't we understand when God places us somewhere that God knows what God is doing and we should lean on that understanding that God knows what God is doing. Please lean on God. Please communicate directly with God. Understand the most powerful, the most prolific prayer any human has ever spoken that any human can acknowledge God and ask God for something through the form of prayer, that is the Lord's prayer. 
It doesn't matter what a religion, a denomination tells you about this prayer is for healing. This prayer is for that. This prayer is for this. This prayer is for that. No. The Lord's prayer is the most prolific prayer and the most powerful prayer ever spoken because Jesus, God's begotten son, spoke that prayer. That is why it is the most prolific prayer ever spoken. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. So, if you have the Lord's prayer within you, and you extend upon the Lord's prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That alone, that alone, asking for forgiveness, asking for forgiveness, and asking for the power to forgive the next person <coughs> is very important. Excuse me. It's very important. Asking for that. And that is within the Lord's prayer. Acknowledging God as the Father. That is what, right there, that's what Jesus did. Right there. Right there. Even though we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior, out of respect. Jesus didn't say, dear Jesus, our Jesus. He didn't say at the end of the prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. No, he did not. Because all glory goes to God. And then even though we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, he's the Son of God, the Spirit of God dwelt within Jesus. And that is what Jesus is telling us. And Jesus left us with that Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And if God can have all of these things work out in accordance and over time, then why can't we continue to accept where God is placing us and then move forward from that point? God didn't say stay there because Jesus already told us what happens when you bury your tokens. Jesus already told us what happens to seeds that fall on rocks? Seeds that fall in the thorns and the thistles. Seeds that fall in shallow soil. Seeds that fall in fertile soil. So it's up to us. It is up to us. Now, if you are going through the situations which you are going, trying to go down that straight and narrow path of God that Jesus spoke about. Look at, look, look at Jesus' life. Look at the life of Jesus. Look how much temptation Jesus was surrounded by. Look at the life of Medgar Evers. Look at the life of even certain world lead leaders. Look at Winston Churchill's life. Look at Mother Teresa's life. Look at Margaret Thatcher's life. Look at Gandhi's life. Look at these individuals' life. Was it easy for them? Here on this earth, dealing with all the things they had to do, war, running countries, trying to do things the right way. Being a woman of God, being a man of God, and also dealing with this world, God has given us several examples. But are we listening to these people? Are we seeing what they had to endure and understanding that we have to endure too, but it is the ones that are willing to cut down the path that is straight and narrow. That's the catch. 
Everyone thinks the path is straight and narrow and they get to walk down this straight and narrow path. No. 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 Jesus was homeless. Jesus and the disciples were homeless. Jesus was an alien. The disciples were aliens. They were immigrants. They traveled from place to place with no roof over their head. They slept in the rain. Yes, we see tents and this and that when we watch these TV shows. But realistically, they didn't always have these things. They didn't always have them. The images of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in porcelain, in gold, or whatever, looks nothing like the description that is there in the Bible. I don't care if the Jesus is black. I don't care if the Jesus is white. I don't care what ethnic group you put that Jesus in. It doesn't look anything like the Jesus that was described. The injuries, the wounds don't match up. Again, that is people profiting off of Jesus. They are profiting off God instead of letting God turn them into a prophet for the world to inherit the kingdom of God. That means a lot. It's crosses everywhere. Cross here, cross there. I have a collection of crosses at home myself. People sell that. Oh, I'm going to make some crosses. I know people are going to buy a cross, you know. That's what these companies are doing. Profiting off God. Profiting off God. When Je Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, our Savior, went to in into the place that God had sent him, which was an edifice filled with Sadducee, Pharisee, and other people who felt they were better than. And Jesus tore up the temple. Jesus tore it down. We are forgetting that, that Jesus went and tore up that building. Why did Jesus tear the building up, people? Why did Jesus tear the building up, children of God? Can you tell me, children of God, why Jesus tore the building up? Well, I'm going to tell you why Jesus tore the building up, because we are the church. Render to Caesar what is Caesar. God can do nothing with cash. God can do nothing with Zelle, Cash App. God can't do anything with that. Jesus can do nothing, nothing with your credit card, your debit card. Jesus provided those things to you. That's like a parent asking their child for their debit card back, for their card or whatever back. I don't get it. I don't understand that. No, God can do nothing with your cash. No, God can do nothing with your monetary means. Nothing with it, but expand it but cause exponential growth for your monetary means. That's what God can do. That's why Jesus went there and tore up that temple as an example to show you, you don't need that building. You are the building. You are the temple. You are the rock. That Jesus, that God, has built the church upon. Jesus wasn't speaking of Peter. He was speaking of humanity. But they want to make it seem like it's Peter. They want to individualize it. They want you to be confused. This is why you must understand and you have to find God for yourself. I've said it several times. 
know what the word religion means, the etymology of the word religion, etymology of it, it means to bind back again. Yet God has come to set us free. Jesus has come to set us free. The Holy Spirit has come to set us free. But religion binds us. Hmm? It, it, no, it binds us. It's right there in the etymology of it. Then let's go further. People have denominations. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm a Christian, but I'm this. I'm a Christian, but I'm that. A denomination. Do you even know what a denomination means? Have you taken the time to break down the word denomination? Denomination. Have you broken the word down itself? The etymology of the word denomination means to break apart into different names, into many names. Woo. What? What? Wait, religion means to bind back again. Like, but I know Jesus said he came to break the yoke. God came to break the yoke. God gave us free will. Jesus said, God said, I, I may come that you may have life. And have it more abundantly. Not to not to bind us. Not to have us in, in spiritual handcuffs. Then let's go to denomination. Hmm? Denomination. Broken up. Sectioned off. Broken up and broken up to many parts, many names. So if you're a Christian, you have this Christian, that Christian, this Christian, that Christian. This, this form of whatever religion you practice, that form of whatever religion you practice, this form of whatever religion you practice. What? Then you have sectors of it. What? And then you got all these names. What? Of these different churches. Some of them have the same name, some of them have different names. We don't even know God's name. Did you know that? Jesus said it right there in the Bible. No one knows the name of God. No one. No one. But yet, we have all these different religions. Know that God understands all this already and know that God is sending people like me to speak out and let you know that you are made in the image and likeness of God. Not that religion, I mean, come on, let's be real. It does not state anywhere in the Bible that religion is made by God. Religion is made by God. It never says God is a religion. God is a spirit. God is the Lord of spirits. That's who God is. The Spirit moved across the water. The Holy Spirit right there was with God, not religion. I didn't hear anything about religion moving across the water or denominations moved across the water. Whether you are practice Islamic religions, Hinduists, Sikh, I don't care. Christianity, I don't care. God is a spirit and God wants you. Christianity doesn't go to heaven. The Islamic practice doesn't go to heaven. The Hinduist practice does not go to heaven. The Hinduist practice does not go to heaven. And any other practice does not go to heaven. God is aware of all this. It is just like a theist and an atheist. Yeah, a theist and an Atheist. Do you know the difference between an atheist and an atheist? A theist is someone who believes and knows God exists. An atheist does not believe in God. They don't believe God exists. Did you hear us? Theist, atheist. Do you see how similar those words are? Did you know that if you believe in God, you are, are a theist? But if you don't believe it, they don't want you to know that. But if you believe in God, you're, you are a theist. 
If you don't believe in God, you are an atheist. Now, how similar are those words? Understand that God knows everything and God wants you to know God. That's why God has made this world the way it is. This world is a puzzle. The words we use, we have to be aware of the etymology and the definition of these words. Do you want to even understand what the word sin means? Because these are the places that God has taken you through words. Everywhere we go is through words. Everywhere. Street name, city name, highway name, building name, words. The power of words. Everything. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Lie. The greatest lie ever told. Words destroy. This is why God says, I speak the living word. I am the living word. I am the living word. God is the living word. So that sticks and stones may break my bones. Lie. Lie, 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 lie. Let's be truthful now. Let's be truthful. Have you taken the time to study the word sin? To look up the etymology, not the definition, the etymology of the word sin. The etymology of the word sin means to miss the mark. To make a mistake. That's what sin means. And we all make mistakes and fall short of the glory of God. Of God's perfection. Now don't we? So don't put yourself in a place of depression. Don't put your place, yourself in a place of forgetfulness. Don't just put yourself in a place of moving forward. You must remember all of the stuff, all of the stuff that I just spoke on because it's in the past. It's occurred already. That is how intellectually sound God is. God is that intellectually sound. We have to believe it. We have to know it. All of these things, all of these things, all of these were hidden mysteries. If you do go to church and you do go to church and you have Bible studies, ask someone what the word religion means. Ask the pastor at your church. Ask them what it means. Ask them what the word sin means, the etymology of it. Do they, they know it? Ask them about it. Ask them. Why not? You go and you sit and you listen and it's called a congregation. Do you even know what a congregation means? Do you know what it is? A congregation is allowed to congress. What does it mean to congress? You're supposed to be speaking with one another, communicating with one another. Yet, are you doing that? Now, I understand on a Sunday, that pastor must speak that word, and they must get it out. But the pastor also gives you different days of the week, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I don't get the opportunity to attend church, because I have a fully disabled son that needs 24 hours, seven days a week care. I am the church. I am the church that God has built. You are. So I must find God for myself. And so I stay delved in to the word of God. All day long. Especially dealing with a son that can't walk, talk, sit, stand, nor crawl. Can't feed himself. Has uh, epilepsy and multiple other conditions. And just was in the hospital for 57 and a half days. Just had complete spinal surgery last year. 57 and a half. What, what, 50 plus screws in his back? Something, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we almost lost him then. He's been on life support multiple times. So you see, if I can sit here and speak the way that I'm speaking right now, why? How is it, rather, how is it that you cannot? How is it you cannot? If my wife can be as strong as she is as a mother, as a woman, dealing with seeing her son, like a newborn baby pretty much all day. And she has to lift him. And he's over 100 pounds and she's lifting him, changing his diaper, dealing with his seizures, dealing with all the other conditions. That is the strength of Mother Mary, Jesus' wife, Jesus' mother, 
rather, Lord, my wife, rather, the strength of the mother of Jesus. And there are a lot of women who have these strengths within them. Reach deep down with inside of yourself. Know that there are other people who have a situation that's much worse than yours. We have never heard our son speak our names. He's never said mom. He's never said dad. He will never be able, according to the doctors, to tell us he loves us. He makes consonant sounds. Think on this thing, but he can give us a smile. And every time we look into his eyes, we see the purest, purest human being you can have. Because he cannot miss the mark. He cannot sin. My child cannot sin, which is a true blessing. Because he can't walk, talk, sit, stand, nor crawl. So he cannot go against the will of God. All he knows is the will of God. When you look at his eyes, it's the eyes of a newborn, fresh, untainted. And I have that begotten to me. Because Trevon is begotten to me. My son is begotten to me and my wife, my wife and I. Because he's truly God's child. My son is only begotten to me because he is God's son. He is God's creation. God's creation. My wife is only begotten to me through marriage because she, is, she belongs to God. I understand my wife belongs to God. And God has given me the opportunity to be in this place, in this current generation, the most blessed generation to ever grace planet Earth. Because we never had to see Jesus to believe in Jesus. We never did. We never had to see the outrageous acts of God to believe in God. We never did. We didn't have to have 25 foot giants roaming the planet, supersized men. We didn't have to, to believe in God. That says a lot about you. That says a lot that you believe in God. But God wants you to know him. That's the place God wants you to be, is the knowing of God. Now, how is it that you know your mother, you know your father, or you know your guardians if you don't? know who your mother and your father are. You know who's taking care of you. you. You may know your birth date if you're fortunate. Some people don't. You know your name. You know who this person is or that person is. You know where you work. You know all these different things. You know the sky is blue. Then how is it that you don't know God? You tell people you believe in God. How is it that you can just stop and say, I believe in Jesus. But you know this person is your friend. You know him. No one can fool you on that. How is it that you don't know God is your personal Lord and Savior? That God created all this? How, do, how, how can you not tell people, I know God. I know Jesus. I know the Holy Spirit. How can you not? How can you not? Go beyond belief. Just because Jesus said all you have to have is the faith of a mustard seed doesn't mean stop at the level of the faith of a mustard seed. That was a parable by Jesus. Jesus got a lot of people with that. But Jesus didn't get me with that. No. I'm holding on to the garment of Jesus just like Veronica did. The lady with the blood in front of me. Her name was Veronica. Though it's not in the Bible, they didn't want to give her her, her credit. The lady with the blood in front of me, her name was Veronica. I had a classmate named Veronica. She's gone. She's been gone. She was a beautiful woman. And she held on. She's a beautiful, beautiful young lady. Went to high school with. And she held on. So say her name. Her name was Veronica. And she held on to the garment of God. Yes, she did. And she pulled something out of Jesus, not because she believed in Jesus. Veronica didn't just believe in Jesus, didn't just believe in God. Veronica didn't just believe in the Holy Spirit. Veronica knew she was going to pull something out of God. Veronica knew she was going to pull something out of Jesus. Veronica took the Holy Spirit before the disciples even took the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus stopped after everybody's touching and feeling on him and throwing things and flowers all towards his way. 
And his disciples were like, what are you talking about, Jesus? Somebody touched you. Everybody's touching on you. Get real. Man, we got to get you out of this crowd. He's like, no. Who touched me? And everybody, oh. And she stood up bold. I did. Makes it sound like she, oh, I did you. No. She told him I did. Because she believed and she knew she was beyond that belief. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? Don't you understand that you too must have the belief and then go beyond that? Go to knowing. Go to the knowing that God will do it. Go to the knowing that Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, your personal Lord and Savior, will do it. For God said, I will grant the desires of your heart. So you desire just to believe? That's where you want to be stuck? It's just belief of God, belief of Jesus, belief of the Holy Spirit? I tell you, no, you don't want to be stuck there. I know what God can do. I've seen God heal my son several times. I've seen God heal my son miraculously. I, I've seen it. I know the powers of God. I've seen God heal other individuals miraculously. I've seen God relieve people of pain. I've seen it. So I know what God can do. I know what God can do. I know God. I know God. I know Jesus Christ the Nazarene. I know the Holy Spirit. Do you know God? Do you know Jesus Christ the Nazarene? Do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you know them or do you just believe? Hmm? I'm asking you to go to your root stock. Go to the root stock. Don't just go to the root. Go to the root stock. Go to the root stock. Dig all the way down there. And remember, you know God. Remember, you know Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. Remember, you know the Holy Spirit. How many altars say, do this in remembrance of me? And you sit there and you stare at that altar as you doze off. How many altars say that in churches? Do this in remembrance of me. And you just wonder what it mean. I ain't never asked what it mean. Right now, I'm doing what I'm doing in remembrance and putting back together God. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this to put me back together. That's what it means. Do this to put me back together. What is this? The will, the method, the strategy of God. You know what it is. Get to know God. God's very first question to man was, what? Where art thou? Where art thou was the very first question that God asked man. Are you answering God? Are you answering God? Are you answering God? Have you answered God? Have you said, God, I am here. Are you bold enough to say, I'm right here, God. Use me up, God. People say, oh, they say it all the time. But oh, when it comes time to be used by God, oh, everybody want to catch the Holy Spirit. They want to feel the chill. They want That ain't just the Holy Spirit. What? So you telling me when Jesus was dying on the cross, he didn't have the Holy Spirit? That wasn't the Holy Spirit. You telling me when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fiery furnace, that wasn't the Holy Spirit? See, everybody want to catch the chill and want to be free. You telling me when the disciples was beheaded, that wasn't the Holy Spirit? You telling me when they got locked up, that wasn't the Holy Spirit? You telling me when they got beat, that wasn't the Holy Spirit? God will send you through so much, and that's the Holy Spirit with you, enduring that pain. But everybody wants the goodness. Mm, 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 mm. No! And you know I'm right. You know I'm right. 
It's just like when you go to a morning service. I'm not talking about the early mornings. I'm talking about you mourning. You in tears. Because somebody has transitioned. And this person that transitioned was a person of God. And the AC's on in the church. But it's hot. And everybody in the church feels the Holy Spirit moving across the waters. What's your body made up of? Mostly water. Your body is made up of mostly water. Okay? So when that person that was a person of God, I mean, they knew God. And they got on up yonder. And the AC blowing in the church. But it's hot. It's hot. And everybody feels it. I'm talking about newborn babies. I'm talking about everybody in the congregation out there. I'm talking about everybody. The minister. It's like he preaching the sermon of who what the pass Passover. The actual Passover. That's how he feeling. That's how she feeling. That's the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther King, I have a dream. That's the Holy Spirit. Malcolm X, when he got right, that's the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Oh, yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. That is. Even when you have someone renounce an organization that they used to be part of, that's the Holy Spirit. When someone used to be part of an organization to where it was filled with bigotry and hatred, and they renounce it, and they move forward, that's the Holy Spirit. That's change. That's what God loves. When someone used to work the corners, and they renounce that, and they don't work the corners no more, whatever form of work on the corner they used to do, they don't do it no more. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is. So it ain't all about just speaking in tongues, a language no one understands, not even your own self. It's about communicating. Because when Jesus spoke to the masses, Jesus was not speaking in tongues. Jesus spoke with the cloven tongue of fire. Speaking in unknown languages, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't do that. I mean, I've spoken in tongues before myself, so don't get it wrong. But the Holy Spirit comes in many ways. Not just a dance. Not just speaking in tongues. Not just crying and wailing. The Holy Spirit comes in many ways. Always shapes, forms, and fashions. So we have to understand where God is taking us throughout all of this. And God is taking to us to a place of remembrance, and the remembrance is to know God. God wants to take you to a place of the knowing. So it's up to you to allow God to take you to a place of the knowing or not. It's not on me. It's not on the next person. It's not on your pastor if you, if you go to church. It's not on them. It's not on that deaconess, deacon. It's not on your counselor. It's not on your spiritual advisor here on this earth. It's not on anyone else. It's on you. Because at the end of it all, at the end of it all, it will only be you and the maker. And you know what I'm saying is true. So get to know God. Get to study the word. Let us in with a prayer because I have to get my day going too. Our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior. By way of the grace and mercy and the ever-loving power of the Holy Spirit, God, thanking you, Father, for taking the time to speak through us and utilizing us as vessels. Because we serve the Lord of hosts, which makes us host, Father. And we want to make sure we go about to be fruitful and multiply, Father. That we let everyone know, Father, that we are one race, God's race, the human race, and that the power of the human mind, Father. The power of the human heart, Father. That is where you dwell, Father, is in our mind and in our heart, Father. That is what you speak of with the renewing of our mind, and that is what we're doing here collectively here on social media, Father. We refuse to let the garment of God go. We refuse to let the garment of Jesus Christ the Nazareth go. 
We refuse to let the garment of the Holy Spirit go, and we will stay girded to the loin. We will stay placed, palmed in your right hand. Thank you, Holy Trinitarian. Thank you, God. Amen, amen, amen. We acknowledge you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth, our personal Lord and Savior, by way of the grace, mercy, and the power of the Holy Spirit, God. We love you and acknowledge you. Amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Go about your day. Make sure you keep God first place and remember, plan strategically for your life. Our life will strategically plan for you. All right? Amen, amen. I'll talk to you all later.